Our geodome project is finally so close to actually happening. We're so close to breaking ground on the tiny house village that we've been working on for like two years now in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. So what I wanted to do on the Rob Bill channel was head out to North Carolina and tour other luxury geodomes to get a lay of the land to see what we need to do, what we need to think through. We're actually meeting with the builder today, Alex Allred, to tour the facilities, take a look at the foundation, take a look at the waterproofing and see what all goes into creating a luxury dome experience, both from the logistics side of running the business but the actual construction side too and spoiler alert i always thought i was a pretty good designer and pretty good at this airbnb thing but it's always very humbling to come to these amazing places like this and realize that i'm actually not as good as i thought i am but that's okay because that just means that i have more to learn and that i have to continually step up my game this is an important message for all of you airbnb hosts never settle always be a student of your craft i am a student of my craft and i'm always out here studying and you should be too Top marks for this amazing geodesic dome. Top marks to the owners for curating a really amazing experience. The bedding here is probably the best bedding I've ever slept on in an Airbnb. This is where a lot of Airbnb owners seem to cheap out. But my favorite part were the pillows. The pillows were actually really nice, like super, super nice pillows that I would actually have in my own home. The sheets were nice, the duvets. It was just felt like a very quality, like hotel type bed, right? And it was really cool to get to wake up to this view. Objectively speaking, people will pay you more per night to have a view like this. This is a magnificent view, really just across the board. The name of this amazing property is called Vero Mountain and it's right outside of Asheville, North Carolina. I'll leave the listing information in the description below because you definitely need to book this place. It's got hot tubs, AC, electricity, and toilets, making it the most luxurious glamping stay I've ever experienced. And the best part about it, the land. Get a quick tour of the property. Jesus, the How big is the property? 158 acres. Okay, that's crazy. The outdoor aesthetics of this place checked all the right boxes the watermelon you're good doesn't have to be too official uh -huh. but the inside of this place was like nothing i've ever seen now we're finally touring the geodomes and every single one of them have their own theme the theme of this one is a japanese villa well what would you call this actually you might think this is a single but it's actually made for two just move over <laughs> can two people really fit in yeah that's funny they're no. going to now <laughs> Oh man, you know, yeah. I don't know about in that. In the true Japanese style though, you have to be naked, so let's go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think that's everyone's style. I feel like more like I'm pooping than I'm taking a shower. Because like, I'm like on a squatty potty basically, you know? I like it though. So you take a little shower here, or you take a little bath here, you're looking at the view. Really, I mean, it does not get much better than this, I'd say. Now this is a bathroom, all right? This <laughs> This is probably as spacious of a bathroom as my tiny house in Joshua Tree. Small little vanity here. I know this. Is this a hearth and hand mirror? It looks like it is. I own many of these mirrors and I've owned many of these mirrors and they are in many of my Airbnbs. Beautiful, beautiful shower here. Beautiful. Oh, I can't step in here. Beautiful shower and uh, really nice little bathroom. Always be honest, be kind, keep your promises, smile, say please, and say thank you. Now, if you wouldn't mind, I did have some bad Thai last night, so I do need a couple of minutes. <laughs> so I've noticed in, in your other dome, and this is kind of one of the popular trends with domes, is like these walls. We don't want to make it too crowded, so you lose the feel of what a dome is, but obviously you need a separation. So these are really just room dividers, and it's all one interior space that's good for either a 24 or a 30 foot size. And how big is this dome? This one's 24, yeah. 450 square feet. Yeah, it's big. Okay, one question I had was about these curtains right here. Do these, like, did this come with a curtain rod? And did no, you... so we, we designed this and we fabricated these rods. Um, so you just, did you do it at a conduit? Is that what this is? A conduit. Nice, dude, because that's creative. We, we couldn't find a product that matched. Most of the time, they'll hang out, they'll come too far, you lose a little bit of space. So we contoured it along with the shape of the dome. That's very creative. So typically a dome is not able to have curtains. I thought that this was something they provided at like an additional cost. 
custom, bro. Nice, dude. <laughs> That's cool. All right, so these are a lot thicker than normal, right? According to the elevation, you need different size tubing to accommodate. Can we rotate that? What, out of the just, shot? Yeah, it's just blocking you. Sometimes you gotta get the perfect shot. Yeah, I will say. <clears throat> yeah, do I look good? You look really good. Okay. So, according to where you live, your elevation, mm -hmm. one of the reasons we like Pacific Domes is because they're able to provide the kind of tube thickness that's needed for the snow and wind loads that it requires. So right off the bat, I see two AC units. I think that's the main one. That's a supplementary guy right there. And then you've got this big hog of a, <laughs> of a <Yeah>. fireplace. Uh, <laughs> master hog. <laughs> you should really change up the wording on something. <laughs> <laughs> you got a large fireplace. Large fireplace. <laughs> the cool thing about this is a guest can come in and instead of trying to build a fire, they can just push a button. And this, I think it's 120 pound capacity, so it's going to last for two or three days. So come in, push a button, you have a nice ambient fire, and don't have to worry about it. Amenities like an electric pellet stove are what really separate this type of glamping experience from some of the more primitive units I used to run back in the day. This is all luxury because when you have electricity and running water, you can provide any amenity you want, like heating, a bidet, an amazing Japanese bathtub suitable for two middle-aged men, and even an awesome kitchen. Look, I mean, a little bit on the smaller side, but it's exactly what you need. All you really need is they've got their little indu uh, induction stove in here. So if they want to, if anyone wants to cook anything, like anything small, like eggs or something like that, you can totally do that. Coffee maker, fridge, very, very well curated shelf here with like olive oil. I mean, really all beautiful, very, very nice. And what I really like about the geodome, now that I'm actually stepping in it, this is probably my first time inside of a geodome, come to think. There's so much natural light. Check out the ceiling. Like you wake up and I mean, granted in the summer, it's probably can get pretty hot, but in this time of the year, at this time of the day, it's beautiful. Let me look at myself. Is, is my lighting good here? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, I've never looked this good in my life. Every single one of these domes have a very specific style. The one at the very bottom of the mountain is a more of a boho style. The middle one was a Japanese style. This is a mid-century modern style that, that's pretty obvious based on a lot of the different pictures here. We've, we've got this textured wall here. Funny story, I didn't think I was gonna say this on camera, but when I woke up this morning, I did go straight into this. <laughs> The only thing I would do a little differently if I were gonna design these, which I am, because we are building the most epic geodome project in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. The only thing I would personally do is, you see this wall right here? Check this out. They obviously do this to build room dividers and kind of build a flow into this. I think I actually might spring to put like a loft. I, I would probably build this wall right here down a little lower and make it so that you can put like a full size bed up there. That way parents could in theory come travel here with their kids or couples could come in cram in here. I know that it's kind of a smaller space to do that. You know, it's 450 square feet, but that is also part, I don't think that glamping has to be so small, intimate, and romantic. The most fun I've ever had glamping was with my friends and my business partners actually setting up our units and four of us crammed into a little 16 bell tent. And it was just fun because we sat around, we froze together, we played board games. I think we played Jenga. And I think that's part of the experience too, is kind of cramming a bunch of people and just kind of like roughing it. Even though obviously this isn't roughing it at all. So now that we've done a little tour of a couple of the spaces here, I actually want to talk to Alex and get his insight because he's the one that really got this place to the finish line in terms of the construction, the design, and the overall curation of this space. And he's built a few of these and he has a very successful glamping Airbnb business. So who better to talk to than him? You built a few of these before. This is obvious. I mean, obviously they're all going to be a little bit different depending on the finish outs and everything like that. But what does it typically cost to, to build a luxury dome? Well, if you want to do something like this, this is a 36 by 36 foot deck. A deck like this, two stories, engineered to support a hot tub, it's probably 75 grand, 80 grand, something like that. I believe that, you know, the deck that I just built at Sevierville, that one that I showed you, that was the multi-layer or whatever, that cost about 45,000 bucks. Yeah. And it's not engineered on a cliff or anything like yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, it is a little bit, but it's similar, but different. So I could see how easily you could spend another 30 grand on that. For sure, because it's supporting the weight of a hot tub, two stories, the kit, everything. Mm -hmm. So And then all the bodies you keep in the closet. All too. the bodies. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. But then the kit, so the kits are pretty inexpensive. Yeah. They're maybe 20 to 30K for, yep. for That's what kit. we spent on ours, about yeah. 22,000. You got 75,000 for the deck. Yep. You're looking at 97,000 yep. so far. And then what and else you got? So a lot of people want to do, like, there's a lot you can do on your own on the interior. But if you hire everything out, you're looking at 150, 175, something like that. But there's plenty that you can do on the interior. It's not very complicated. You can assemble these kits yourself. You can, depending on how handy you are, you can do a lot yourself. So is the 150K that you just mentioned, would that be to basically do all the stuff that we saw in there, roughly? Pretty much. So you yeah. can save yeah. a lot in sweat equity, but if you have to hire everything out, obviously it goes up. But there's plenty you can do on a pretty simple build like this. Roughly speaking, I mean, it could cost about 250K to build one of these. You could. I mean, it depends on how on, on custom, how nice, right? how custom yeah. you want to go. Now, could you build one of these for like... Like if you had the 97,000 with the domes and the deck, could you do something with another 50,000? For sure, well look, so the first ones we built, we actually built for about half that. Oh, I okay. did so much myself and it didn't have a, a big, it's just the deck is the footprint of the dome itself. Right, right, so you don't have this save, big extensive hangout area. Yeah, you're gonna save okay. a ton. But obviously the more custom you go, I mean we have granite countertops, we have marble in there, we have high-end finishes and that's where things start to add up. By the way, I met Alex at HostCon, my short-term rental conference back in January. I heard about his cool projects, we started chatting, and now we're going through the process of building a tiny house in Asheville, North Carolina, and he's going to be the builder, which just goes to show you that the power of networking at a conference is real. And guess what? HostCon 2 is happening October 28th through the 30th in Houston, Texas. You can still get early bird pricing on tickets. Come hang out with me, come pitch me cool projects, and see the most amazing speaker lineup ranging from Pace Morby to Avery Carl to Jesse Vasquez, Christy Wolf, and so many others. So click the link down below to snag your tickets or head on over to hostcon.com. Since your domes do actually have a lot of these elements, what are you charging per night on your property? So we're around 250 to 300, depending on the time of the year. And we have a cleaning fee, Airbnb fees, a guest is gonna pay around 400 a night. Do you know your occupancy on a yearly basis, per chance? Things have uh, slowed down a bit, but mm -hmm. we're still we're still around 80%. Okay, cool, so 250 bucks a night, 80% yep. occupancy, that's 292 nights a year. What? Rain Man over here. <laughs> that's the only number I have memorized in the <laughs> Airbnb. Like, I can't say 70, I can't say 90, but I know 80% is 292 nights. <laughs> Because that was always my metric. Like I was always comping stuff out at 80%. Last year we did over 200,000 in revenue. On how many domes? Two. Wow. So about 100, about 100 each. Rock and roll, dude. That's great. And that's today's episode of Raw Built. I hope you learned something about building geodomes today. But at the very least, I hope you're inspired to go out and do this type of stuff. I mean, this is me. This is like, we are living our dream right now, building the coolest Airbnbs in the world. I don't know if I can build the coolest geodome in the world because they already exist. But I'm going to try my dist. I'm gonna try my darnest, <laughs> but I'm gonna try my dang hardest to do it. All right, catch you on the next episode of Raw Built. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and that's it. Bye.